Yes, yes. Well, um, is anybody new here tonight? Mm, oh, no, you're not, Steve. <laughs> yeah, don't let them, yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. Over and over again. Yeah, that's the that's way. right. That's right. Good. <laughs> yeah. You know, the hearer always hears the message in an old way. Yeah. That's why it gets through by the hearing. Yeah. When the hearer arrives, it's sort of neutered in a way. Hmm. Well, if anyone have any topic they want to talk about specifically, like the claiming or or uh, the negation of self-inquiry, stuff like that. No? No, nobody comes prepared to these things. Carrie and I were just talking about that. Well, that's good, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, with the, the presentation at uh, this one lady I really liked, she, she was she came to the one of the early talk Saturday, and then on Monday she came to this other one, and I was sitting up in the front, and people were coming in, and she sat in the front across from me, and we started talking, and you know the meeting, the live meetings never start on time. As soon as there's some people, they start, and, and so. Um, she was talking about how uh, the other day she felt that she had the permission to leave the satsang, which she had been in her spiritual seeker days, which was the day before that. She would never leave. Yeah, she would put up with a lot of shit and she would always try to soldier through because of the thing like, I'm going to miss it. Yes. If I leave, I'm not going to get it, whatever. And then uh, just hearing the message gave her her permission to leave, which is awesome. And so she used that word on Monday. And I was, uh, I like that word a lot because this permission is freely given in a sense. The permission from the head is sort of meritocracy and it changes the value system all the time. So, and I found when there was uh, that permission, I saw obviously the opposite condition, which seemed to have had a lot of time in my life, which was a withholding, yeah? A certain not embracing the, this event right now with the hopes that I would embrace a, a more special, more meaningful event later. And I've noticed that 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 withholding posture can become arthritic quite easily. And then when those magical moments you were wishing for arrive, you can't embrace it. Yeah, because it the habit of constantly looking at the here as a, as a roadway to a mythical there is going to kick in and whatever here you whatever there you arrive at turns into a here yeah so her this lady was so cool that she had this feeling of permission because that's what came with this the the message when i heard it as an unspoken yes there was just uh it was like the it's like the engine gate was given permission to shut down yes the the sentinels were given a permission to leave their post. Their the looking for the enemy uh, was called off, and uh, because when the head is playing God, basically it's almost like an extortion. We have to earn or work or jump through hoops to get permission just to be okay. And I think it, uh, it's time that that's enough of that. Yeah, that slavery can be over right now. And just like it exhibited in her by 
leaving that day and then joyfully coming back, not as if she had to go to the, the talk, but because she wanted to go to the talk. Yes. It was just beautiful. And then we were driving down these rocky roads, which means every road in this town. And she was walking on the sidewalk and we went by and she was like a little girl, like skipping down the road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the day was a gift, not, not something you had to earn. Yeah, it was beautiful. And so these are the examples or the demonstrations, sometimes small, sometimes large, uh, of traveling lighter. Yeah, Just in her world of learning and seeking, she never had permission to leave. Yeah. She never had permission that I got, I want to do something else today. And then just one satsang and that permission was available. I would loved it really. I made my, it was just lovely. So we have a statement in recovery and recovery is really the emphasis in recovery. You know, the problem is seen as residing in the small M mind. Yes. So in recovery, the first thing that's necessary, first thing is to not drink a day at a time, but the recovery isn't about not drinking. The recovery is about recovering from the underlying causes and conditions that compelled the, this action figure to drink, yeah? So the recovery is from that. You can stop drinking today, but recovering from the underlying conditions and systems Systems for some of us needs a way of life as this action figure. So first thing in this whole program of recovery is quit playing God. It doesn't work. Now, first of all, most people, people I don't, but they believe maybe they have a God in their life and they're hoping that God's playing in their life. But I don't know if a lot of us come to that clarity that there's something in us that's playing God, yeah? And it seems to be located, if you need a location, or it's broadcast, seems to be coming from the mental activity, the narration, and the uh, presenting thoughts as a certain continuum, all like wedded or all like balls in a necklace held with the my, yeah? And if you look at when you wake up in the morning and your head starts talking most of the time it's projecting that the day's going to be bad that person's going to leave you they're not going to send the money they owe you you're not going to it's going to be a terrible forecast when you go to the doctor what is that but playing god yeah now this is when we run into something this is sort of the what we emphasized in these talks, the first video we ever did was the sheep lion. And then the young, the young lion that takes itself to be a sheep, and it doesn't matter how long or how short it does that, when it confronts that old lion and the old lion takes the young lion's head and puts it over the water of the hole, the water hole, and they both, there's the recognition by the young lion through the recognition of the two reflections, it's a lion, yeah? And then the old lion would say roar, and then it would roar immediately. Did not have to sign up for three months of roaring lessons, yeah? So it didn't matter how long the, sh the lion thought it was a sheep, it was never a sheep. And then, therefore, that mistake was only in appearance only. So the correction of that mistake takes no time. So that, that lion got it. But what happens when the old lion takes off and then the young lion leaves the water hole? That head is going to kick in and is going to speak to the lion as a sheep about having an incredible lion experience. And in most cases, me being one of them, we live under that identification or we're listening to that story of the identification and it's taken to be so. 
And therefore, most of our journeys and our inquiries aren't about that. It's they're from that. They're from the sheep programming. And the old, so the point of the talks really was noticing that going to satsang, it's it's more in a sense more important because life will have you see your reflection quite a lot. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna be brought to that water hole and you're gonna see something. I don't think that's the dilemma here. The dilemma is how can it sustain itself? Because it doesn't seem like it does. It seems like something kicks in and claims it. And then Nudis, the real message, which was a, a revelation of what you are to an experience uh, that what you're not had, yeah? And I thought, and I think a lot of people thought that this, this if we saw what we were, that wouldn't be able to be touched or co-opted or misdirected. But I think we've been wrong. And I think the more most important part of the message is the follow-up. What happens when you leave the waterhole? And to try to get the point across that the identification as self is not you doing it. It's not a choice. It's mechanical. It's of a mental process. It's not a choice. And the feeling of it is a choice is a product of the mental process because it has us as the doer as of everything. And this is what surprises and frustrates people because they feel like they've had this huge peak experience. They saw with utter clarity, nothing and everything like that. And in a couple of days or a day or an hour or maybe a month or whatever, the head kicks in and they, by course of the head kicking in, they're still under that old assumption. The clarity about everything else wasn't available about that. So how do you get that clarity? Yeah, I think it's through satsang, tell you the truth, because then you already have the evidence of the sheep arising after peak experiences, probably, but there, it's not it's not it's not bringing that ease and comfort it would if you if it was seen clearly when you see it clearly there's no like you now know that the epiphany and you saying you're having an epiphany had a a, a relationship when you get to the party it sucks yeah that's incredible Incredible news. That's incredible information. Because what, what is the information that's most valuable about a failed system is that it's failed. Yes. And so now you've heard a new possibilities. You've heard that maybe I am what I've been looking for this whole time. And if that's true, why have I been looking for it for so long? Because there's been an act of being identified as something else. Are you in that act? No, you're the listening of that act. So you are, the hand doesn't even find itself going into the glove. It starts from being in the glove. So it's quite easy to see everything from the glove's point of view. And e even the topic of the hand will be seen as a topic the glove is, uh, the glove is entertaining. I feel you need some kind of invitation Maybe it'll be one of those lightning bolts, maybe a catastrophic situation, maybe cathartic, who knows? Maybe a run in the mill, you dropped your wine glass and everything opened up. I don't know, but I do know, just like in AA, it seems like it's not, a, not necessary, but most people arrive at recovery through a bottom. Yes, that's just how it goes. Yeah, they something has to there's got to be a certain pitch of futility for something to crack and a new possibility to take off. Well, I feel satsang plays that role here. Yeah. Satsang, and the beautiful thing is you bypass the idea of you having a bottom. You see the bottom where the you resides. Yes. You see the bottom what's producing the sense of you. That's what you see. This is truly the easiest, softer way.
And what happens? There's a loss of interest. And then you know there was an inordinate amount of interest in it. And then what seemed to be mysteries and baffling and confusing about existence and living and futility become clearer, yeah? Because you're onto something. You're seeing them from the truth, finally, finally, yeah? The truth doesn't need second and third and fourth and fifth rationalities. It's just obvious, yeah? And it usually doesn't vibrate in you through thoughts. It, by, it vibrates over and under and through thoughts, not by thoughts, yeah? It's more like a sense, and that sense sometimes can be registered as an unspoken yes or the last answer or knowledge before knowledge, yeah? Or the that which is before the seeker and therefore cannot be sought, yes? So it's just beautiful, beautiful. And it was really nice to see uh, you know, what I see sometimes in Zooms and people's facial structure change and shit, I was seeing them at the live meetings. It was great. <laughs> it was very, very nice. And uh, of course, there was a lot of resistance because it's a spirit, a spiritual center. <laughs> so there was a lot investment in uh, and from that investment, this invitation may see, sort of seem like a threat, yeah? And therefore, I'm seen as a threat, and I can usually feel the energy, you know? <laughs> That's why we keep it for only three days. We leave the fourth day. By the fourth day, the villages would try, try to kill Frankenstein, probably, the doctor. <laughs> so we leave. <laughs> <laughs> but it was wonderful. We had a lot of people got I met, you know, a lot a lot of liveness. So yeah, I, uh, you know, it's sort of like would you do anything to, you know, ride that Bugatti for one night or to drive a Toyota for 20 years? Yeah. I think in the, in time, you'd much rather have the Toyota, much more reliable. Yeah. So for me, the dog shit awareness that you may not have a sky full of uh, fireworks every night. You may not have, you know, the pulsating oneness of the universe but you'll definitely have an ability that was unfound before of traveling lighter. And you'll definitely have a sense that, that it has been given. You don't know to who or from what, but there's a sense of gratitude and honor and awe that in this case has arisen, yeah? By something that's anonymous, having such an intimacy in this life. Yeah. So I'm a real believer in dog shit awareness. and. Um, yeah. So if anybody has any questions, <laughs> the dog does. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mike, anyone have any questions? Uh, no hands yet. Uh, Miranda, are those hands or just, I don't know, it's just a. Well, I want to say one thing. Over these years, one of the strong uh, sensibilities you run into in this transfer back and forth is how uh, resilient the sense of being the chooser is, yeah? And I feel it causes us not to want to see stuff that would be quite liberating because we feel we're responsible for its opposite, like the thing in the Course in Miracles with that guilt that somehow we, we have separated from God or the Godhead. When that guilt would be uh, influential, it would play a role of like blinders, yeah? And, very, uh, and a lot of selective seeing, because you don't maybe want any more responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> and then you spend a lot of time actually trying to get relief from that responsibility. And a lot of it is to be unconscious, 
Yeah. Yeah. Maybe even, even through the seeking of consciousness, we want to continue to be unconscious of what this, this hidden idea that if this is the case that I'm in, I must have had something to do with it. Yeah. That's a real bugaboo. And I've noticed it in all a lot of uh, interaction with people over the years and years and years. It's a stubborn little uh, knot there. Yeah. And I don't believe there can be a fearless or thorough uh, inquiry if the if the object is seen as going as you. <laughs> when you see it as not you, it can be quite fearless and thorough. But when it has the flavor of you, there's going to be a sh uh, shying away or missing the most important aspect. Yeah, it's sort of like an act of blindness. Yeah. I mean, I know in recovery, the, the type of people that are in recovery, they can take other people's inventory like that. They're quite good at it, you know? They immediately run it down and everything. And they're very clear on who has defeated them and what did they do and what they didn't do, but they're not clear in their role in things, yeah? They just, it's difficult to see when you're so busy looking, yeah? And the course would explain explain that by this whole world, this whole dreaming has been made in a sense, or is it it's being a it's appearing really to play a role of us dumping guilt by living with other perpetrators that seem so worse than us, we get a certain feeling of relief that we're not so bad. So we can walk around with the uh, the good face and have them wear the bad masks. It never, you can never get, get rid of an imaginary guilt. <laughs> so the whole thing backfires and here we are. <laughs> what would happen if you saw you weren't that? And what would happen if you saw nothing's ever happened? Yeah. Would you be seeking forgiveness and especially your own forgiveness if you saw nothing had ever happened to be forgiven? I believe many of us have had that hit, yeah? But it usually doesn't get much life. It gets sort of suffocated quickly by the mental activity. But sometimes it's enough, especially if you back it up with satsang, you'll see through it, yeah? And there'll be what they call the atonement available. So, yeah, nice to see you, Lisa. Nice to see everyone. Uh, you got a hand up from Matthew. Uh, bring Matthew on. Where is he? Hey, Paul, I'm hanging, ahead, out with the, hanging out with the lions here. Um, oh, good. The, uh, you just touched on my question, which was around making amends. I've been thinking about that with my children. Because I've, I realize, yeah, I've grown a lot through Al Anon and through the 12 steps, and I've had a spiritual awakening also, thanks to your satsangs and meeting you. And, and you just touched on a little bit about the atonement. And to be honest, I, I've been challenged to understand i'd like to understand a little bit more about that and about making amends in general and in your book you talked about how you went back to the store and you handed the guy you know 50 bucks and you were yeah. in free. there was something about the process freed you but do you mind talking a little bit about a little more about making amends and how atonement and amends are related Well, yeah, you'll make some. It's a weird thing. By not making the amends, you may never see atonement. <laughs> Even though the atonement says that there's nothing that ever happened. But in this little paradoxical activity, you may not see that uh, when you haven't made a, the amends. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. That's so, the paradox that I'm. Because. There's something inside, you know, I am that, as you said, the dog that shot on the lawn, I'm not that dog anymore, right? 
That's so, true. but I haven't said to my children, like, hey, I'm sorry for the way I was behaving back then. I thought that was a more, you know, I thought that was helpful. And it, and now I've learned through the spiritual awakening that it wasn't. And, you know, I'm making a living in men's hall, the way I deal with them and interact I with them. I think that's the best way, Matthew. Is the living man? I don't but know. Should I acknowledge but, it that the dog shot on the lawn? You know. Yeah, but I don't. Sometimes that old spiritual seeker goes to extremes, and you may try to do too much. Yeah, we're yeah. not that important. So yeah, I think the living amend is the best uh, communication. Yeah. Okay. That's Got my it. humble opinion, right this second. Okay, because something in the back of my head is like, just say you're sorry about the dog shitting on the lawn, but you're not that dog. You never were, but now you know you're not that I dog. I wouldn't and say that to them. I would act as if you were the dog and just make the amends. Okay, good. So just, yeah, I'm sorry about that. And now I'm doing a living amends and they're familiar with the 12 step program. So I think, uh, yeah, I don't know if I have to go into the living amends. I'm sure they, they're either, they're picking up on that. You don't have to it. proclaim that. Just say, Hey, yeah, this is part and parcel of the program of recovery is to, to, uh, it's not a, you're not asking to be sorry. You're just proclaiming that what you were doing then you're not going to do now, so to speak. Yeah. Good. Okay, yeah. good. It's an amend. It's not like a mea culpa. So an amend is to change. And so you've changed. And that, that the greatest evidence of that would be the living amends. That's probably because, you know, a lot of what we do is speaks a whole lot louder than what we say. So. Okay, good. The interesting thing is the trick with uh, what we said. Yes. In the atonement, nothing's ever happened, so there's nothing that's needed to do, and yet you still may need to make the amends to see that. <laughs> yeah. Right. This is part of the flavor of because it doesn't go. People would so say, "Well, why don't why do you do that?" Well, that's the funny thing. Yeah. So uh, you could have talked you know, like a, a, like mathematical physics to prove the atonement means I don't have to do anything, but it won't work. Yeah. And then when you make the amends, you see it in a, in a much more, let's say, new, uh, nutrition rich environment. And now, you know, yes, nothing ever happened. Yes. And that's it's true, funny. Paul, because my high school girlfriend, my first girlfriend in my life from, you know, 45 years ago, called me up and asked me out to lunch and it was out of the blue. And, you know, I did make, I said, you know, I, I want to make amends to you. This was just, you know, last year. And she said, what are you talking about? There's nothing to make amends for. But the fact that I made amends, yes. it gave me it's tremendous happens. freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And the thing is, that's happened to so many people where you've been dwelling on some terrible thing. And when you finally meet the person, they don't remember a damn thing about it. Exactly. <laughs> it, was, it was just taking up all this space in your head. And so therefore, by going through that ritual, yeah, or that uh, process, it brings you there. And for many of us, that's how you arrive at where you never left. It's just weird. Yeah, but yeah, this is what happens to it, people. I feel uh, there's there's something going on that doesn't jibe with our mental logic. See, the mental logic is if I was never the doer, then why do I need to do whatever? Ba 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 ba. But in fact, you probably do need to do that, and then you realize you didn't after it's done. Yes, but you right. not realizing before it's done because you think you have a get out of jail free card. Yeah, 
So the head is using it in a weird way and it doesn't work. And then when you just do like the basic thing of making amends, it works, yeah? It just yeah. shows how wrong the head is to me, yeah? Right, because my head is like, hey, you don't worry about the dog. You weren't the dog. You know, my head is doing its normal thing to stop me from making the amends, which I know well, because the head is- That's valuable. Yeah. So now you see what you used to look from. And then that's right. gonna, the camera's gonna keep, see the, the camera backs up. They're yes. seeing more this way than this way. Yes. It's this way, no this way a lot more because what's seen is us the activity of the of selfing yeah where most mm -hmm. of us are looking from that we're like have there's like a hornet nest of activity and we think that's a stagnant solid thing called paul it's a whole fucking wasp nest yeah and then you see it yeah so that which you used to look from you now see hallelujah because there's a lot yeah. of space available yeah, and the space is one of the is one of the main ingredients of traveling lighter. Yeah, yep. it is. Yeah, I knew. I remembered when I went to AA and I had a revelation because I felt terminal unique. I mean that what that was the spell I was under. Yeah, yeah, I was in a cocoon of concepts and how every how thoughts were seen was incredibly unique thoughts that I had and feelings no one felt like I do and doing heinous things no one did the things that I did and I was walking around in that condition you better believe I wanted to get out of it at any cost but in tomorrow I wanted to get out of that I'd pay any consequences tomorrow to get out of that mm -hmm. yeah and this was the, the, the engine of addiction that just kept on keeping on, yeah? I go in, I don't go in and do 80 calisthenics or fucking do some gym, you know, gymnastic leaping. I sat on my ass and I listened to people share. And what they shared was their thoughts, their feelings, and their uh, things that they did under this influence. And, and I had to come, I only could come to two conclusions. How did they get my thoughts? So they're not my thoughts. And that was the beginning. And what came about when I entertained, they're not my thoughts, space. Space between this activity. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just opened up. Mm -hmm. And then once I saw that out, I, I started going a lot of the thoughts that used to be called mine as alcoholic. And then the idea spread into basically all thoughts as not mine. Yeah, unbelievable, yeah. really. And then the feelings people shared, and I, I said, Jesus, I felt just like that. And I did, and they did the same thing, worse than me in a lot of cases. So this idea of terminal uniqueness, that was an extreme case, but it the head lens it goes in that direction, yeah? You're thinking you're having private thoughts, most people, yeah, and, mm -hmm. and feelings. Yes, that they need to sit with someone and try to explain as if the person's from Neptune or something. Yeah, this is mm -hmm. the, this is a, I mean, the head uses whatever it comes in contact. It comes mm -hmm. in contact with separation here. Yes, the mm -hmm. appearance of separation. It has a field day with that to the point it has you as a long lasting independent separate thing. Mm -hmm. completely an island of your on your own of your own yes mm -hmm. which makes incredible amount of difficulty in communication if <laughs> really people yeah because everyone's walking around i'm looking like these people aren't doing what i want they're looking at me as someone that's not doing what they want it's just incredible yeah and we, it's difficult to be in other people's shoes when you're feeling so terminally unique, yeah? Mm -hmm. In my case, it was helpful to get run over twice by a car to produce some fucking empathy so I could see, I could see things differently. Now, I would hate to have to... Can you imagine if we set that up as a manufactured cathodic <laughs> event? I wouldn't mind running over a, 
a couple people here. Let's see. <laughs> Craig May. Run over Craig. Uh, Richard H. Yeah, just run them over. I hope you get it. <laughs> but but uh, this is the easier, softer way. Yes? Everything, so much has happened with me not moving at all. Just sitting on my ass and listening to these ideas coming from me or others, mostly from others, obviously. And, uh, and just having so many of those manufactured houses get blown away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So oh, I have great faith in it. Great faith in the message. Yeah. Thanks. From Paul. its own. Effect. Yeah. So thank you, Matthew. And uh, there was a guy I worked with a number couple of them, but a guy that I worked with in AA that I had to tell him to stop doing inventories and stop okay. making amends because the self had claimed it and was fucking building another beast. Yeah. He yeah. thought of every, you know, if he made a left on the street or a right, he dwelled on that choice. It was way too obsession, obsessiveness with self. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to no, make you... perfect amends. No, you don't. You just fucking. Yeah. But the. The insight that it, making the amends leads to the atonement, which nothing is nothing is required to do, is a really I was missing that logic that you know faith of doing the work and receiving the gift. The gift, I guess, is atonement. It's another gift of the program. The thing is, it doesn't see the ment. It doesn't jive with the mental logic in a way. Yeah, mental it logic says it looks at almost everything as a get out of jail free card. Yeah, <laughs> mine does. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, the fact is, you're in Rome. You got to do what the Romans do. Yeah, doesn't got mean it. you're of Rome. You're in Rome. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. I've seen Thanks. a lot of people try to use non-duality, not to go to AA, and they're drunk non-dualists. Yeah. <laughs> i have i've seen a lot of it so all right thank you thanks I, i'll see you saturday i hope see We're you saturday yeah yeah church sure. looking That's forward great. to it hey i want to yeah, yeah. share i want to share something real quick um this is carrie uh you know i have a my youngest daughter she's 22 now and uh when she was 18 you know, uh, she never saw me drink or get high because I was sober for like 12, 15 years. So, um, but when I started, you know, she basically was the one who caught me. She smelled alcohol in my breath and said I smelled like Big Daddy, who was my father, who drank bourbon. And um, she just looked me in the eye. And uh, after us, this was after a few years of being sober. And the best advice I ever got, and it's really simple. She looked at me and she just goes, dad, just don't be a dick. And I'm like, that's perfect. So that's all I wanted to share. And that sticks in my mind when I want to spout off, but yeah, keep it simple. Thanks. Thanks, Gary. Uh... I'm going to curb my humor today. So uh, <laughs> uh, anyone else? Um, not, you know, I was going to mention that there's a nice <laughs> statement in the Course of Miracles. I don't know, know what I mean by nice, but it reminds me of like AA. It has the mirror images of the investigating resentment and then, you know, checking on your this what you assume other people's resentments are towards you in the amends. <laughs> So as far as usually most people refer to that your only responsibility is to accept the atonement for yourself. And then there's the other one that's kind of like the Bodhisattva vow, but very short. And it's um, to not see anyone else without the atonement. So you, like, you can't do one without the other kind of thing. Yeah. Not that I you can. I, I mean. I, uh, that's getting into too much slog for me. I would just question who is it? No, well, that, well, yeah, how are you going to accept the atonement for yourself? <laughs> but yeah. as far as just, again, just like AA, where it has you break everything down to one, 
you have to accept that you're an addict, forget about the problems of jobs and relationships and all that. That's just a reference there that there's only one thing. I'm not saying it's, it's easy compared to this, <laughs> but I'm just pointing out the mirror image. The Course of Miracles does on almost everything always have a mirror image statement. So it's not just like a court, just like yeah, AA, yes. like AA does that. But the thing is, what that's kind of looks completely different at night with all the work on the Oh, really? Sorry. Wow. That was, uh, so, that was someone's in their head on. on <laughs> uh, Breaking out. <laughs> I, I would want to get to bed soon if that, that was going on. <laughs> <laughs> the thing with this is uh, this is what happened when I would read certain stuff from the, the reader, from the head, yeah? It was daunting because when they described describe that I have to do something and I wasn't doing that and I didn't see that way, it exempted me from the inherentness of the condition that I am. Yes. And it yeah, was going to be, it. It was gonna be a, either a subtle or another form of, I have to climb over this fence and then I get the vista. Yeah. That to me was a slavery I found in spirituality, just the way I was reading. Things, yeah. So I'm a real believer in the simplicity of, what we share about a statement Ramana Maharshi uh, commented on, which is a question he had, he heard many, many, many times, is what is, is it free will and predetermination? Is the free will predetermined? Yes, whatever it is. And after he answered that question, he said, really the value in all these questions is to ask who is it that has the question, yeah? So who is it that believes they have to do this, this, and this to get there? Or who is it that's saying it's impossible for me to get there? Yeah, both, both, doesn't matter being wanting to do it or not doing it. There is no one there, yeah? Not as we hold the one, which is really a long lasting independent separate thing, yeah? Someone who has the attribute of consciousness, yeah? Someone who has, can, is the seeing of that, the hearing, the feeling, the, the taster, that sense to me is the target. I always like to point that because uh, some of the stuff where I was coming from when I read it sounded like an order, yes? And I wasn't up to the task. And being not up to the task made me have this weird sense of guilt and shame. And then the uh that i was dis and because of that there was a disqualification yeah that's there actually a why tricky i move noticed that. that's why i mm -hmm. noticed that that statement at the, uh, when ding was after you know being around this message and i realized it was because of the, you know what you're talking about like that's how i had always heard the bodhisattva vow like no way i mean how are you ever going to be you know like you know be there for everybody's salvation yeah. or, or however it says it so, so I understood what the course was pointing out. By it would have been just as hard as the Bodhisattva about how do you see somebody else without the with the without the atonement? I mean, don't, how do you not see that? But after this message, yeah. it's like, oh, that's just the Bodhisattva about with you know trying to make it clearer or eat or break it down or something without but having see, to spend lifetimes or whatever. The idea of that. Uh... What tries to see it is the seer. That's the blindness of it, yeah? Possible, yeah. Yeah? Some of the things that bodhisattvas did was expression of that state they are in. They were, it is not a way to arrive at that state. Yeah. yeah, because you can arrive at that state. It's non-arrivable and it's non-refundable, yeah? But the way we read it, we give it time and we give it distance and stuff like this. That's the importance of it. The, I, 
the statement about the Bodhisattva isn't important. What's important is to notice the reaction to it. That's where the value lies. Yeah. I feel. So it's the same thing as Ramana, I believe, was implying. You know, the, the questions about free will and nothing. It's the value of using those to point at, well, who is that? Yeah. Or what is that that believes it has free will? Because the assumption is it's us. Yeah. And then that us and free will, put it just gathers weight every time and every space. Yeah. But, but to see that it's not you is the essence of traveling lighter. It's not that things change, it's how they're how they're traveled through or with or as. That's what changes, yes? Yeah. And then things may change, but truly the traveling lighter uh, is about whatever is going to happen, you'll travel lighter through. It isn't you're going to travel lighter through and avoid a lot of shit that's going to happen. It's not like that, I don't feel, yeah? It's just like a working acceptance, maybe because of the futility of uh, resistance. Yeah, who knows? However, whatever collapsed the imaginary floor, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it was the collapsing of the floor, the F L O O R. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Whew. Nice to see you, bro. Yes. I uh, got a hand from Bruce. An actual, uh, a raised hand. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone, again. Didn't think I would get triggered. <laughs> um, the way this has been coming to me, image-wise, image, image wise, is like a wake of dreaming. <clears throat> As the wake of a boat, you know, the dreaming in the sense being these thoughts are, that arise about, you know, family, relationships, you know, guilt, all that uh, amends, all that stuff, uh, to me would be riding the wake of thoughts in the past, you know, in the sense of, that being the sense of dreaming. Um, and they, they, you know, it passes, the thoughts pass. Um, things come up and I would, I might say that in the past, I didn't feel, a, I felt a sense of aloneness uh, without, you know, a hand to reach to. Um, but as I go through things recently anyway, it seems uh, uh, a happening seems to occur, you know, a touch base, uh, vent or share, whatever it's called, I don't know, uh, channeled, the energy channeled. Um, offers a sense of relief, um, a traveling lighter. So again, thank you. Yeah. Um, hey, I don't know. I, <laughs> I could be all wrong, but that would only be, you know, mental activity again. I don't know. So I'll ride in the boat as much as I can, I guess. If I fall out, oh well. <laughs> They'll turn around and come and get me, I hope. <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot, everyone. A lot of Thanks, energy. Bruce. Thanks, you. Thank you. Hmm. A lot of times, is don't we arrive at the state of uh, "I need do nothing" by doing a lot of the stuff? It's the dualistic paradox. So you do a lot of stuff, and that's the convincing of to the point of "I need do nothing." Yeah. But some uh -huh. of us, if you try to jump to the I need do nothing, uh, <laughs> it doesn't work. Yeah. Well, if the, you know, Buddha did nothing, found out, you know, do nothing, and then look at all the forms of Buddhism um, we have today. Um, the gut sense, it's not angry about, let's say, the world situation, you know, you have so many people, people, families dying in a, you know, an earthquake and um, yeah, the mind can go places, but to feel the feelings, you know, the thoughts, um, my heart goes out in a, in a sense. Um, 
and yet um, there's a certain faith, trust in, in uh, what is that uh, at least being here now is enough to, you know, travel lighter with. Yeah. That I can share, you know, be open. I better get off. Well, we're happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy you feel uh, you feel uh, you have permission to uh, share and feel whatever. Yes. The mission of the person, the mask. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. Anyone else, Mike? Oh. Mm -hmm. Mike, anybody else have a question or a share? I'm trying to raise my hand. Sorry. Can I can I share something? You got me and you got David. Oh, sorry. I think we broke Mia's arm down in Mexico. <laughs> you can't raise a hand. No, I, I, a... One. I should have broke the right hand. I'm sorry. But, Mia, what's up? So this is inspired by a Craig May story, um, but one in Mexico City after seeing you and the, the gratitude and, you know, the, the beauty of being together in Asia or whatever you call it. But um, I had this, like, crazy feeling that I wanted to do ceramics here <coughs> for bizarre reason. And it dawned on me while doing ceramics why that might be the case. Um, and I don't know if it's a doer here or just, um, you know, just... So you remember, you might have talked about um, things gluing and, you know, um, you, you talked about the groove, things grooving and gluing. And I was making yeah, this here, pot. Yeah, so I'm making this pot with ceramics and all the things that need to happen to make this bloody thing stick, right? You, you got to cut grooves into the clay and then you got to put layers of mud and clay and more layers and more layers, three layers, and then to get it to glue. And I'm thinking, fucking hell, mate. Like, this is, this is what it takes to make a simple little pot, you know, little, little pot. And I'm like... And it, it, it just, it was almost like it was echoing your words about grooves and this. And while I was doing that, I'm like thinking, look at how much it takes to make something stick, you know? And there was just this really nice unraveling of something that was quite delightful. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to say hi and thank you. Oh, great. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still at uh, having, you know, when you do some talks in another country and they're sort of like built on each other, it creates in time, it creates a momentum or a wave. So I really crashed when I got back home and uh, physically and energetically, really. And uh, okay. Yeah, I'm coming out of it now, but it's amazing how uh, uh, you know I've had the opportunity to share a lot over the years and travel and do it a lot, and uh, the emptiness of what the every day is circling around the emptiness is so cool yeah we're we're always we can always step back into a black hole <laughs> wouldn't it be nice in a weird way if you if they had a a stream of your action figure life and a lot of it was empty <laughs> <laughs> there's these big like big chunks of empty <laughs> and just even with a little chunk of empty it truly brings into into stark contrast the appearance of reality in the 
the continuum of the action figure, there's these giant, giant holes blown out of it, empty. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of cool. <laughs> <laughs> or it could be interest high peak of interest and and slowly as life goes on a lack of interest where mm -hmm. the graph just disappears in and of itself <laughs> yeah yep. and, that, and that's the beauty of satsang no. you know seriously you know absolutely yeah yeah absolutely. <laughs> To, to to have something that's not so appear to be so, there's got to be a lot of layers that are constantly put on. And at any moment, the uh, the unstuckness unstuckness of it is always available. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's a lot of work to appear to be something that you're not. <laughs> I mean, the system is working overtime. <laughs> <laughs> don't you ever wonder why uh that at night you dream of bodies most of the time or there's dreaming of bodies yeah that it's which is dreaming. Dreaming, yeah that's which is dreaming the bodies is dreaming of bodies yeah yeah the dreaming is not of bodies. The dreaming is what it is, and what it is is appearing as bodies mm. based on certain conditions and certain uh, grooves and mm -hmm. certain mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. imaginary adhesion. And yeah. you know, the emperor is always truly appearing on having no clothes, even though it's fully decked out in bubble regalia, it's still naked, which is beauty. It's beautiful. Totally. Yeah. So it was nice to see you, honey. And it was nice to see uh, Monique, my old friend, and Amelia and Coco. And uh, had Coco was such a nice hostess and really took care of all of us. And uh, yes, and I don't think we left a mark, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh. and, and, and and coming to the AA meeting was a highlight as well. That was pretty amazing. Yeah, that was yeah. the magic mm. in there for sure. Yeah. Mm. I'd say you yeah. Paul, I'd I'd say you left a mark. There's a lady skipping down the street. You left a mark. Yeah. There's, there's marks that were left paul didn't leave any mark oh thank no, God. Thank, no was, thank goodness for that right <laughs> yeah, so very, yeah yeah so anyone else hey a new thank you and then john luna hey a new thank you for all your support i appreciate it and everyone else who donates time or a little or a lot uh I believed in this seat assignment and all your charity and donations are, uh, are a reflection of that. You, uh, you see something that has value in what we're doing here, all of us. And, we, and it's, uh, that's not the only way, obviously, to demonstrate it. But in this world, it's a strong demonstration. Because if there's if there what isn't one old idea that float or if there is one old idea that floats around finances is you're never going to have enough. So to offer it to someone and to something is incredible. I feel faith and a demonstration of faith, and that's how we set up this Zen bitch slap. We didn't set up with subscriptions or this or that because we had faith in the message. Yeah. And it's been echoing ever since. Yeah. So thank you. I want to thank everybody. So you've got demonstrations through the hands of Jack and John Luna then. All right, Jack. Come on. Jack and John went up the hill. <laughs> to fetch a pail of water. <clears throat> uh, hello. Um, <clears throat> 
So, uh, do you need to goggle Jack or anything before? I don't know. I, I, I I haven't talked all day, so I'm, it'll take a second to kick in, but, uh, all right. But you, but you, uh, you brought up uh, or mentioned um, uh, this uh, uh, emptiness, and uh, I just have a little share about that that you know someone might find interesting. So this seat assignment I have is it's in a real beautiful location, and uh, I have these uh, nice sliding glass doors that overlook um, the property. And it's, it's very beautiful, you know, there's old cedar trees and, you know, nice lawn and, and uh, there's a bird feeder and the, I get all these beautiful birds. And uh, so it's, it's just a really beautiful view. But <clears throat> um, what I noticed recently as I was looking out at this beautiful view is, the beauty was not in the objects themselves. The beauty wasn't in the trees and the birds and the, and the, and the, and the lawn. The, the beauty was actually, the real beauty was uh, in the empty space in between the objects. That's where the real beauty was. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know. It was just, it was just a kind of a, a, a moving, it was just a movement, you know, uh, and to understand that and that, that, that it's that, uh, the beauty of that uh, empty space um, that actually produces the beautiful objects. And just Mia talking about her pot and making, making uh, her, her pot uh, made me think of that. I, 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 someone said it. I don't remember whether it was Niz, 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 uh, Nizagata or uh, Ramana, but something about if you break a pot, the, the space that's inside the pot doesn't go away. <laughs> yes. Anyway, that's all. I, I hope I didn't take too much time. And, uh, and I'm also thankful for everyone that uh, contributes here. Thanks. Thank you, Jack. And you know, the most useful part of the pot is the space, yeah? Yes, sir. Yes. It takes, a, it's the most purposeful part of the pot is the space, yeah? Hmm. I'll have, right. to ponder, I'll have to ponder that some more. Thank you. Yes. You're not going to fill a pot up that has no space, eh? Hmm? C. All right, John Luna. Thanks, Jack. Hey, Paul. Hey, hey what's up, Mike? Um, you know, I've messages coming through loud and clear tonight but I did have a question um in regards to to like relationship and uh yeah. you know you feel like you're yeah. falling for somebody you know I'm sure you you know of course you experienced it before the, your, your your understanding took hold and you experienced it after and so I got there's like a desire like to really have it unguarded you know this time because a lifetime of being you know like you had to protect yourself or you feel you have to guard yourself or whatever this, this, but then there's like the teaching is like you are what you're looking for so like why do you feel you need something that's not in your maybe life to share, maybe to share that bro john hold on maybe to just share it what what how, how do you mean paul well, if you are what you're looking for, you may want to share it with others. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But yeah. I find I don't want to be like pushy, but also like some people don't understand. And I don't even want to re. re I feel like um, really like I like to share like because it's fun because it feels good, you know, 
it's like being in love too, in a way. But also, I realize like for some people, it's not comfortable. You know what I mean? Like they they don't they don't want to look there. I could I guess I understand. It's harder to understand now, but I can still remember. You know, but I think on another level though, like when you're talking about having someone in your life, you want to be able to have that kind of contact. You know what I mean? You don't want to, it's okay to get by like with the artifice in the world, right? But in a relationship, I, I can't see myself being able to do that. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? Well, the, if that's going to withhold you from finding out, then I don't see great value in that. Just find out. Just find out, right? Yeah, if the possibility is there, why, uh, you know, meet it dead on arrival? That's, you know, just uh, remember the I don't know type idea. See what happens. Yeah. And maybe events will bring you to that foregone conclusion or maybe something will be new and go a different way who knows that's the only way you're going to find out yeah there's no shortcutting the, the act, activity of life really you just go through it you just yeah you know, and if it has something in store for you it's going to happen you can't you know it's sort of like resistance style yeah yeah right. so all right i appreciate it Paul. thank you yeah, bro. And uh, yeah, uh, one thing I learned in AA uh, it was to step out and then a stair will appear, not to withhold and wait for a guarantee, but just to put your foot out and see what happens. And I feel like I've always been caught and treated pretty damn well with mistakes and successes yeah, yeah. They all just, are, just uh, being just being let's just, just letting whatever comes up come up just being you know yeah and, you know if you what well, if you live on the sideline fine too but if it seems to be irking you then you know put your foot out see what happens right yeah i found uh uh you know you know like old ideas are they're like a fence around your yard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then they, they tend to uh, contract and your yard gets smaller and smaller. Uh, yeah. So this, this is not a, a means of trying to stay safe in a sense. Like it is safety. It's ultimate safety. But well, of course it is. The head of course wants <laughs> its idea of safe, uh, you know, you won't leave the room. <laughs> would be like being, you know, live frozen. <laughs> frozen. So the the rivers of emotion never move. <laughs> and you can look out from the, the uh, on the other side of the ice. You know, no. That's like a that's a weird version of the observer. Yeah. I've had that the whole life when I was younger. The whole self-centeredness, I felt like I was everything between me and everything was like a glass of an aquarium yeah i just uh it was just a, a weird like like saran wrap over a, a clear window it's just amazing so you know it's, it's I grew some you know what i used to say in recovery was you know people think of you know going out getting shot up you know shot by the cops overdosing and shit that's living on the edge to me what living on the edge was was sitting someone who sitting with someone who was loving me unconditionally yeah. that was fucking on yes yeah the shit getting shot at and beat up was fit in fit to fit perfectly into the story having someone love me uh and not uh, being stopped by my idea of requirements was scary as hell. So, yeah. That's an, that's an expression of courage coming through you. You know what I mean? Not, not, not some kind of bullshit from when you were young, whatever. Yeah. I hear you. I, hear yeah, you. I went through. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, 
we say it in recovery, this action figure by whatever had an inability to have a viable relationship with another person. And to fortify that defense, drugs and alcohol were used for many, and it actually, the head was using them to do a lot of other things. But they, uh, the rivers of emotion that ran through this were frozen. And, uh, and uh, the fish that were in that frozen water had a tough time swimming, yeah? It was, uh, yeah, so I just took the, I, I, I took the permission that the idea that something greater than myself was going to take care of me, that gave me a lot of permission. And the, and the world of AA, I could take chances and I learned I could face life successfully. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I could get rejected by someone I really wanted to know and it didn't kill me. And we didn't go burn down our house or drink myself to death. Yeah, I learned, I learned I could face life successfully by facing life. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the way I learned. You know, if I kept listening to my head, I wouldn't have tried anything. I mean, it just, so, yeah, and I knew uh, a lot of shit that I thought was going to kill me can't. So, yeah. Yeah, so right, it's not. Yeah, it's not about trying to be safe. I was running into the sunset just seven years ago alone, <laughs> and then <laughs> I met Amelia, and I just it was like a invitation in there, and I a Bing just said yes, and, and life uh, conspired for us to stay and be together, and uh, yeah, that's nice. If, if a, was left up to the head and not being directed by somewhere else, I would have just uh, tried to attempt to live out that that solitary riding into the sunset. But life had different plans. <laughs> yeah, I love to be the butt of the it's funny. You right. think you know all this shit. You can get blown away in a second. Yeah. <laughs> so john all our support for you man take a chance if you like i think so man i just gotta live that's all and I, it's like yeah. you said you only find out how safe you are by living you know that's the only way well, you know, listen, listen if you reveal yourself to someone else they may be much more accepting of it than you have ever been <laughs> and you'll get you'll get a healing through their acceptance of what you can't accept yeah, about exactly. yourself maybe you'll get out of that that condition of you know father knows best you know right it's hard to see yourself as what you think you are when you're being loved by another <laughs> it, it, it breaks it into stark contrast and one either one's gonna go either you fucking blow the thing up and run or your old ideas get broken yes and that's to me, I, I believe a lot of times as an action figure, it's just love demanding itself back, you know? Yeah, that's it's just, just important. It, keeps, yeah, it just keeps looking at you and <laughs> knows you're full of shit. And then it just, it just wants to get, it just wants to extract the love that it's given you. Yeah. That's a good so, thing. That's a good thing. All and right. that painting has been painted for over a long period of time. I've seen that through a, it was a long portrait that was painted. <laughs> there was a lot of a long... that story, right? Yeah. Is that, so... is that what you're saying, Paul? Hmm? Is that what you're saying, that there's a lot of effort put into that story or that narrative? Is that what you mean by a long painting? No, the, the the opposite. The thing it that which was being constantly invited out. It was the story that was trying to divert that. Then when I lost interest in the story, love could uh, meet up with love. You know. Yeah. I, yeah. 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 This <laughs> idea in you and I is, is the idea of being John and Paul. Yeah. Right. Right. It's that interest in that that diverts your attention away from what's really happening that's full of potential. 
Yes, I mean, you want you want uh, deliveries of certain things, but you you demand it to have the, come in the box that you want to have it come in. Life doesn't do it that way. You got to realize it's probably what offered is always offered. You're just missing it because of a preconceived idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Good advice, yeah. man. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, John. Yes. I trust you. Yeah. Paul. I'm not going to see. Yeah, but I'm not going to start a, a a relationship seminar anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I think I'll stay out of yeah, that. Uh, yeah. oh, Thank man. you, guys. I've gotten very soft in my Zoom world. Um, yes, try to be, try to be helpful occasionally. All right, anyone else? Uh, no, I'm seeing hands. All right, I think we'll take off, uh, Mike. Eh? Sure. Good, We're ready. Good time. Uh, we'll be here tomorrow, and then it's all in the Zen Bitch Slap event page if you're interested. And I don't know what happens, do. do does does YouTube and people can just go to YouTube under Paul Hederman and get the videos? Paul Hederman is probably easier to have them Google, I mean, to have them searched for because the actual channel is Zen Space Bitch Slap. Oh, it is. Uh, all right. All right. Paul Hederman's just easier. Well, yeah. All right. Great. So let me say, all right, Mike, Kerry, as always. Uh, David from Down Under, nice to see you, Dave. We got William S., nice to see you, William. Michael, Stacy, I hope to see him tomorrow. Marty, uh, Clifford uh, from Chiang Mai, nice to Hi, Paul. see you, Clifford. And you, man. Yeah, you're welcome. Sherry, nice to see you. Anu, as always. Craig May. Jack from uh, Kenneth, from, he's, I think he's in uh, Vancouver now. Mia, I don't know where she is. Uh, she's next to the kiln, throwing those pots, yeah. Miranda, another day, woohoo. Yeah, very good. Bruce, Susanna W, I presume, yes. Laurie, Grateful Dave. Uh, let's see who else is here. Uh -huh. I think that's all that's left. I think we lost a lot of people. Uh, that's it, I think. I don't know if I can go to another page. But hey, if I missed you, I apologize. I'll see you soon. Thanks again, Mike. See you. Thank you. Sleep well. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Thanks, Mike. Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Good Guys. night.